Larry had calculated, Jake would join his colleagues at the bar of the restaurant a few minutes after he had identified them among the customers. His co-workers would be going home first thing tomorrow morning, and he, as head of the company, would be staying for two more days to work things out. Larry studied him. Jake was a good-looking man, and his appearance in the bar had already gotten the attention of the female half. He was about ten years younger than Larry, who had recently celebrated his fiftieth birthday. Jake was just over six feet tall. He was trim and athletic-looking, though he didn't exercise. Larry understood why his wife Angelina was attracted to him and why her business trips coincided with Jake's. Larry had accidentally found out about his wife's affair and now, having finished his soft drink, walked to a table at the bar and looking at the men said, Hello Jake, I'm Larry, Angelina's husband. I hope we can find a private place to talk. Jake looked confused at first. His face expressed a smile, but his eyes expressed deep concern, he answered anxiously. Larry, Angelina's husband, nice to meet you. What are you doing in this little town? I came to speak to you privately. I'm here with my coworkers, so we decided to have dinner. They're leaving tomorrow morning. Do you think we could meet some other time in our town? Larry looked around the room. It was half empty, and nodding at an empty booth in the back, suggested. All I need is five minutes. I'll take that booth. Jake followed Larry out. He looked very agitated. Sitting down in the booth at a table, he asked. I can't understand why you came all this way to talk to me. It would have been so much easier to call. It would have been easier and more convenient. No, I wanted to meet the man my wife spends nights with on her contrived business trips in the same room and in the same bed. The quick answer knocked Jake out of his rut. He hesitated and mumbled. Larry, it's not what you think. Don't be ridiculous. It's exactly what I think. And I have proof of it. Proof. Yeah. I just wonder how long this has been going on. I don't remember exactly. About six to eight months. I'd estimate about two years. No, at first we were just talking and nothing happened. But then it happened. And then you emailed all the time. It was through email that we had our regular dates. Larry, she loves you. You know that, don't you? I loved her too. That's why divorce is going to be hard on me. Divorce? You're going to divorce her? Because of a little affair? That's not serious. You don't have to do that. So I deserve to be decorated with horns and a life of lies and deceit. I don't want to call her the words she deserves, but what she did gives me the right to divorce her. And what are you going to do with the evidence you've gathered? I don't want to use that evidence against Angelina. I'll just divorce her and take the kids. I'm leaving now. Angelina is in a neighboring town today and won't be here until tomorrow afternoon. Only then can you tell her about our meeting. You'll be the one to tell her tomorrow about the divorce and give her a copy of the court papers. Explain to her that the court papers haven't come in yet, but they will. She can take her time. She doesn't have a home anymore. When she gets back to town, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, three days from now, there will be a big surprise waiting for her there. If you decide to warn Angelina now, the second set of evidence of your infidelity will reach your wife immediately. There will be other consequences as well. Larry stood up and headed out into the parking lot to his car. Jake hesitated. He did not understand Larry's action at all. To make matters worse, Jake and Angelina worked for different organizations. Officially, they could only cross paths at production meetings, joint meetings. Angelina wasn't in the highest levels of management. While Jake was a man of action, he gained experience in business, got a job in a solid company, where he was quickly promoted. Angelina was a simple engineer who supervised the work done by the company where Jake was the director. Jake felt like a traitor to Angelina. Yes, now, unprepared, he couldn't confront her husband. Not confronted enough to take him at his word that he had some proof of his wife's infidelity. What if he took him at his word? After thinking for a while, he made up his mind and dialed Angelina's number. After a few rings, 
there was no connection. And then he was told that the caller was temporarily unavailable. Jake couldn't resist texting Angelina. And in the text he said, Urgently contact me. We have problems. Your husband knows everything. He realized that his marriage was at stake, but he didn't trust Larry. He thought he probably had nothing. Larry was driving in the car when he heard the sound of a text message. The notification was on his wife's cell phone, which she had forgotten at home while driving away. He stopped the car, took the phone, read the message, then dialed the number of his friend on his phone and said, Dima, you can deliver the package. In the morning, buy out the controlling stake. Got it. 20 minutes later, his cell phone rang again with a notification of a text message. Looking at it on the go, the message read, package delivered. Half an hour later, his wife's cell phone rang. It had to be, since the information given to Wendy had included her phone number. Larry answered, Wendy, listening to you. How do you know that I am Wendy? I was the one who forwarded you the papers you received 20 minutes ago, and I was sure you would want to call my wife back. Tell me, how long have you known all this? I haven't known about them long, but I've had time to prepare. It's unfortunate that this has come on you all of a sudden, and I completely understand your state of mind. Tell me, are they together now? No, she's coming to see him tomorrow. They were supposed to be on a business trip for three more days after the meeting. Are you sure? I spoke to your husband about 40 minutes ago and told him that Angelina could take her time since she doesn't have a home anymore and to be prepared for a divorce. Do you think that's realistic? I don't think so. She won't want a divorce, and she'll resist it. But I've drafted a statement of claim and my lawyer is ready to file it. Your husband will give it to her tomorrow when we meet. And the children. I took my children, and they're already living somewhere else. I did not want to destroy your family, and suggested to your husband not to contact my wife, and not to call her. But he didn't listen, and that's why I sent you the papers. But that's not all the consequences that will follow for him. You have no idea how difficult it would be for me to be without my husband's support. I don't think so. Financially, you're even better off. Everything your husband has is in your name as a gift from your parents. You have access to your husband's accounts. You can, in good conscience, withdraw 75% tomorrow morning. And you'd better hurry. But he'll contest it. Let him contest it. If you do, I'll send a lawyer to assist you. You have to pay a lawyer. It's already paid for. But I won't interfere with your plans. You can discuss it with a lawyer. Angelina was thinking about her upcoming meeting with Jake. She had finished the work on the business trip, but she had informed her superiors that there was a lot of work to be done and that it would take a couple or three more days. In fact, she was preparing for a meeting with Jake, knew it was going to be a generally good night. Tonight Angelina was happy, happy that she was no longer feeling guilty about her two-year affair with Jake in front of her husband Larry. Angelina's life was going great. She was proud to be a wife and to have beautiful and intelligent children. She was respected as a professional at work, and she had a wonderful lover, Jake. But no one knew anything about the lover. Jake was now in a nearby district center, in a hotel where she was due to arrive tomorrow. By that time, those who had come with Jake, his employees, would be gone. Leaving home, Angelina had lost her phone and could only contact Jake by email but the laptop battery was hopelessly dead. She couldn't remember Jake's number, but she knew her husband's number and decided to call him from the hotel phone to see how the kids were doing. Larry answered, speaking. Larry, it's me. I lost my phone somewhere. You didn't lose it. You put it in your purse hanging in the hallway and you left with another purse. I warned you that your purse hobby would get you nowhere. Did you go through my purse? Why would I do that? I just called you an hour ago to see how you were doing, and the call came from your purse hanging in the hallway. I realized there was no point in calling you again. Did anyone else call me? I don't know. I was at work. Maybe you did. I didn't look. Where's the phone? In my purse. Should I get it? You don't need to get it out. 
I'll make do with these days. How are the kids? The kids went over to the neighbor's house to play a computer game. Don't they have enough computers at home? It's some new game, a group game. What? Masha's playing too. I'll tell you more, judging by their conversations, she's their winner. Isn't it time for them to go to bed? Angelina, the kids are on vacation. Yeah, I forgot. It's New Year's vacation soon. I'll have a lot of work to do, but the bonuses for commissioning will be good. You can go away with the kids if you want, but you need to make up your mind now. I don't get it, do you? I have to work. Angelina, I actually make twice as much as you do, and I offered you a better paying job, but you didn't want it. But I've made a name for myself here. Okay, I'll think about taking the kids on New Year's vacation, but that's two months away. Everything has to be decided and planned ahead of time. Angelina, that's exactly what I do, both in life and in work. Larry ended the conversation. By this time, he had reached a fork in the road. This highway connected two areas. Looking at the signs, he confidently turned toward the neighboring region, where he now lived with his children. He had moved them literally in the first two days of Angelina's business trip. She hadn't even bothered to call them back during those days. She did now. She didn't realize he was the one who had moved her phone from one purse to another. In order to move, he'd done a lot of prep work, took the kids' papers from the school, so the school didn't know where the kids had transferred to, to a rural school in the neighborhood. He quit his job himself and immediately arranged a job in the neighboring regional center. In his specialty, within two days of his wife's departure on a business trip, he moved all of her belongings out of the house where her parents used to live and which was now empty. Those things that he considered to be his own, he took to his new place of residence. During the same days he sold his house, it had belonged to him before his marriage. Angelina was in for a very unpleasant surprise when he returned. However, a trap had been laid for Jake as well. Larry managed to drive into death the founder of the company in which Jake was a director, and his friend Dmitri became the owner. The first thing he did was change the director. Angelina got a good night's sleep, turned in her room, and went downstairs to the restaurant at the hotel, had a quick breakfast there, then picked up her things from the hotel reception and walked to the bus station. From there, there was a direct shuttle bus to the town she needed. She dozed comfortably in the cabin, waking up occasionally when the car overcame potholes in the road. As planned, she was there in the afternoon, walked to the hotel, inquired as to which room Jake was staying in. She was told the number and was told that he had gone to the restaurant. She left her bags and outerwear in the restaurant's checkroom and went into the lounge. Jake she saw from a distance. He was sitting alone at a table and picking at his salad. In front of him stood a carafe of vodka and some appetizers. I walked over and said, Jake, hello. Jake raised his head and asked, Angelina, are you stupid? Didn't realize what that tone was. Did you get my text message? I didn't get anything. I forgot my phone at home. That's why I didn't call you. Your husband came by yesterday. He came where? to my place. He knows everything about us, even that we've been dating for two years. Angelina poured all the vodka that was in the decanter into a flute and drank it in one gulp. Exhaling, she said. What to do? I don't know. He handed you a bag of papers. Where are they? They're in my room. I'm not going to carry them around with me. You haven't read them. No, they're your papers and they're your headache. I've got enough of my own now. You didn't ask Larry what it was. He said it's a divorce complaint, that he's taking the kids away from you, and that you have no place to live. I guess it'll all be in your papers. You got any more vodka? We'll get some. Is there any vodka in the room? I'm checking out and going home, so there's no vodka. Did you say my papers are in there? There with my stuff. We have a shuttle bus in an hour and a half. I'll have to decide where to live. Did he give you up to your wife? He warned me that if I told you what was going on, he'd give the set of papers to my wife. And what happened? 
Nothing. I texted you and tried to contact you. Apparently, it was under his control, and he immediately delivered the dirt on me to my wife. But I don't think he did it. He and I had just broken up. Today, around 12 o'clock, my wife called me and said she wouldn't let me in the house. Then the new founder of our company called me back and said I'd be fired. For what? For having an affair on a business trip. But what do they care what you do on your own time? I said so too, but they reminded me of the two-room suite for two, where I lived alone and that it was paid for from the company's accounts, and that my business trips were increased by three days, although no work was done on those days and a number of business trips were even artificially invented. All in all, I, disobeying your husband, lost my job and my family. What did I lose? Your husband said it's all in the paperwork. Why don't we grab a drink and go back to the room? I'll look at the papers. Let's go, but no vodka. In the check room, Angelina took her outerwear and her things. We went up to the room. Jake gave the papers to Angelina, and she, sitting down to the table, began to study them. Tearing herself away from them, she said, Jake, he wants to take my kids away from me. And he sold his house. I have nowhere to live. Where's your stuff? He took my stuff to the house where my parents used to live. Now they've moved to the city, to an apartment, and the house is empty. It's revenge for two years of cheating on me. What do you suggest? We have to go and save what we can save. Only I know Larry's planning this whole thing thoroughly. Okay, I'm going. Where are you going? You haven't read all the documents yet. You've only read the statement of claim. And there's a letter from him in there. Tell you what, I'll call him. Angelina dialed Larry's cell phone number from the hotel phone and was surprised when he answered. Hello, Larry. I understand you're upset with me. But what does Jake have to do with this? Why are you ruining his family and career? If you don't understand, I'll tell you this. Your relationship with Jake was totally inappropriate. I don't know what to tell you. Inappropriate. Larry, Jake is our client. I supervise their work. We talk to him a lot on the job. And as far as I know, not just work. I know you know, but we should have handled it ourselves. I warned him yesterday not to try to contact you. The first thing he did was call you and then text you. So I interfered in his life like I promised. He's gonna have to deal with this on his own. Okay, I gotta go because I have another meeting. Look, let's talk tonight and put this behind us. We'll start fresh. Look, I love you. I'll be in town soon. The business trip's over so soon. I've decided I'm not going on any more business trips like this. Angelina, You've already read my statement of claim. Tell me what you think of it. I won't give you a divorce, and I'm not giving you the kids. The kids are old enough to decide which parent they want to live with. As far as divorce goes, I'm in no hurry. Although, you never know, I'm still young enough. It's not a solution. Maybe we'll get together after all. Maybe. Larry ended the conversation. Jake, who was listening, suggested. Angelina, let's go to the bus station. There's a shuttle bus coming. Sitting in this hotel, we won't solve anything with you. And you say you have a place where your stuff is unloaded. Actually, it's my grandmother's house. She left it to me. But it's cold. I don't have a choice. I have to live somewhere. Talk to my wife. She doesn't want to hear from me. And the house is in her name, a gift from her parents. So I have nothing to do with the house. They left the hotel and went to the bus station. There they got on a minibus and left for their town. It took about two hours to drive. They drove in silence. There was nothing to discuss. When we arrived, we got into a cab and drove to Angelina's house. There she dropped her suitcase and went to her house in the same cab. As she approached, she saw that someone was in the house. She went into the yard and knocked. The door was opened by a woman who asked, Who do you want? I'd like the owner. The woman called out, Victor, there's someone here to see you. Victor, where's Larry? Larry, there's no Larry here. Victor will tell you all about it. 
a man came up and introduced himself. I'm Victor. What questions do you have? I'm looking for Larry. Larry is the old owner. I bought this house from him. And yesterday my wife and kids, and I moved in here. Where's Larry? I don't know that. The house was empty when we moved in. Did you redo the paperwork? I, yeah, of course, about a week ago. Right after his wife was discharged. Where did she go? I don't know. According to the house book, she moved in with either her grandmother or her parents. But I didn't check. Where did he move to? He has a dash in the place he went to. Angelina realized that Larry had been preparing his departure for a long time. She left the house, looked around the snowy yard, and for the first time in a while, cried bitterly. Angelina walked to the bus stop, where she waited for the shuttle bus to the mall, and from there she walked to her new place of residence, the house she had inherited from her grandmother. During her absence, Jake had sorted out the heating in the house, told her, your grandmother and grandfather were wise people. You could heat the house with gas, but you can't do that now because there's no water in the heating system. So what did you do? Pour water. No, I flooded the stove. Didn't you see the smoke coming from the chimney? Did you talk to your wife? I called. She won't talk to me. I called my friends. The rumor of my dismissal spread quickly, and no one needed me. One's busy. Another one's got something going on, and some of them didn't even pick up the phone. Alas, I found out today I have no friends. What do you think you're gonna do? Get a job. What are you going to do? I'm gonna call my husband. I'll go to his work tomorrow. He's a labor fanatic and can't do without it. And you, go ahead and cook something to eat. I brought groceries. And give me your cell phone, please. Where's yours? I don't know. I think Larry has it. Jake took the grocery bag and dragged it into the kitchen, noting, We should at least get your stuff in one room. We can't go through. How are we going to sleep? Make dinner first. I'll talk to my husband if he answers. And if he doesn't, then I'll help make dinner. What should I cook? The pasta and the pork. Baste it and fry it. Then rub it with meat seasoning. That's what pork chops are. That's right. What do you think I'm gonna have with my vodka? I have to go to work tomorrow. Unless my husband fired me. Tomorrow is Saturday and your company is closed. Well, I've already lost track of the days. Give me the phone. Jake gave Angelina the phone. She dialed her husband's number and heard. Jake, I'm listening. No, it's Angelina. I don't have my phone. I forgot. My lawyer will give it back to you. He's supposed to come by after the weekend. Why does he have it? Because I gave the phone to him. He's coming by after the weekend with an offer. What kind of offer? If you're familiar with the complaint, I'm not asking you for child support. But if you want, you can voluntarily pay them some amounts, and there are options in my offer. When our children reach the age of 14 and if you remember, we signed a consent for them to open bank accounts. And they did. I deposited the first sums into them. The only downside is that they can manage their own account, and I want them to have money saved up. Say, for a wedding, for school. How do you propose we do that? I've opened another account and I'm transferring money for their future there. For how long? Long enough. And I don't allow myself, under any circumstances, to touch that money. Anyway, the lawyer will tell you everything. If you want to get involved. Well, I think we're done here. You gave me less than a minute. In all the years we've been together. Tell me, do you have any idea how humiliated Jake was? Do you realize that he lost his job and his family because of you? How could you do this to me after all these happy years together? I have a follow-up question. How could you do this to me, to our family? Larry, you have to forgive me. I need your help. I need you and the kids. Believe it or not, Angelina, I've been thinking the same thing. I realized a long time ago, you have nothing to say. But Larry, think of our family. It's going to be destroyed. Don't tell me I did it. 
You should have thought of that before you started your affair with Jake. You forgot about me and the kids. Now I'm just getting my life in order. Honestly, I'm ashamed of you. But I want to see my kids, and if you can somehow forgive me, I'd like us to resume our marriage. Give me a chance to make amends, please. Angelina, now is not a good time to see the kids. We can call ahead, and I'll figure out how to arrange it. I'll be honest, they don't want to see you. As far as saving our marriage, that train has left, and it's not coming back. There's no way I'm staying married to you. Why won't you even try? Surprisingly, today I'm not upset from what happened. I don't feel sad. I thought I'd be sad or lonely. But no, I'm not. I feel uplifted. I'm happy with what I've done. A little sorry I lost you, but you made your own choices. But I didn't realize it would come to this. You betrayed me and our marriage. You didn't hesitate to do it. You told me you were going on a business trip. You abandoned me and our children to go see Jake. Your actions have consequences, and they cost you your children, your marriage, and your home. If the court orders me to allow you to visit them, I will comply. But the question is, will the children want to hang out with you? I've punished your lover as well, and it's up to his wife to decide what to do with him. What he'll decide, I don't know, but he's definitely out of a job. So you're happy now that you've smeared us. I can tell you that I don't regret a single thing I did to get back at you for destroying my family. I will not stop there until your lover is destroyed. He should not have deceived me when I warned him about this. I feel sorry for his wife for being married to a cheater who destroyed our marriage. That was the end of it. I drove home. Larry ended the conversation he was having from the car. He got out, opened the gate, and drove into the yard. The house he had purchased was not far from the center. It looked imposing and expensive, but he had bought it for pennies. The owner, who had recently built it, was urgently leaving for permanent residence abroad, so he had no time to bargain. Before the purchase, Larry checked with an old acquaintance who lived in this city and had good connections what awaited this house. He recommended buying it. The house was conveniently close to the city center a number of different stores, to school. The university was also within walking distance. Most importantly, the children liked the house. Today, they spent the third day working together to improve it. They arranged the furniture brought from the old place of residence. Masha's daughter took on the cook's duties, she said. The internet has everything and how to cook too. But first, we need to unpack the kitchen appliances or we'll eat pizza again. Let's look for drawers with utensils. They were labeled, I'm really craving meatballs. Daughter, will you do it? I'll do it if I have the right stuff. Like what? Like meat. And so they began to settle in. Larry and Angelina divorced eight months later. As much as Angelina hoped, Larry never showed up in court. He didn't answer his cell phone. Neither did the children. Angelina lived alone in her house. She kept her job, but she didn't travel. Jake found a place to live and moved in, hoping to rebuild his relationship with his wife. But things didn't work out there either, especially since his wife had gotten a job and was being courted by her unmarried peer with whom she was studying. Having children didn't scare him. Angelina spent all her free time searching for Larry and the children, but she had no luck. She went to the police but that didn't help her either. She turned to a private investigator. After a month, he said he'd failed and refused to continue the search. He said firmly, I'm convinced Larry and the children are out of town. It's hard to say where they are. Another five years passed. Angelina's life hadn't changed much. She dated a man, but he was only interested in her money, and realizing this, Angelina kicked him out. Then, one evening, the phone rang. She answered it. Hello, I'm listening. It's Larry. Larry, is something wrong? Nothing special. Mash is getting married next Friday, and I thought I'd invite you. Well, of course I'll be there. Just where to go. I'll text you the address. Can I come early? Come. I don't think my wife will mind. You're married. I am. Where am I staying? My place. In my daughter's room. 
She's already staying with her fiancé. Will you let me talk to my daughter? She's not here right now. Can I talk to her before the wedding? Of course, both her and Ben. Where's Ben now? He'll be here tonight. He's at school. Anyway, you've got my number. When you arrive, call me. We'll meet you at the station. And we live in the regional center of the neighboring region. I'll text you the address just in case. Angelina arrived in the neighboring region. Larry met her at the train station. He picked up her bag and took her to the parking lot. His car was parked there. On the way, Angelina asked him, What should I get for the young people? I haven't seen Masha in almost six years, and I haven't seen Ben either. Nothing. I've given her everything she needs. Maybe just money. We'll come to my place. The kids are here. We'll have dinner together. Masha won't be long. Her fiancé will come for her, and they'll go to their place. They arrived at the house where Larry lived. They were met by a friendly woman. Larry introduced her. Meet Sabrina. This is Sabrina, my wife. Angelina could only say, Nice to meet you, Angelina. Wash your hands. In five minutes I will invite everyone to the table. Where are the children? They called. They're running a little late. They'll be home soon. They have school. Masha and her fiancé are coming. Angelina was shown to her room. She cleaned herself up and went into the hall. Sabrina was working in the spacious kitchen. Larry was sitting in the hall, said to Angelina. Don't go into the kitchen. When Sabrina is cooking and setting the table, it is better not to disturb her. She only allows Masha to do that. She and she are like two friends. Larry, tell me, I've always wondered why you met Jake in the hotel restaurant. Revenge. I knew for a fact that he would violate the condition I set and want to contact you. Jake losing his job was a foregone conclusion. I made Dima the owner of the company. Why did you keep me? I figured you'd already lost enough. Me, your place, your kids, and you've already got a different job. Yes, you punished me very much and especially by keeping the children away from me. They could have called you any time. I didn't forbid it. The only thing I asked them to do was not to tell you where we live. How's Jake? I don't know. When I got to that hotel, I found him in the restaurant. His wife had called him before and told him he might not be coming home. He was in a trance. I honestly thought I'd just come over and smack him around. Then I decided, after all, I have kids. I didn't want to leave them to you to raise while I'm serving time. But I looked into his scared eyes. But his wife got a good marriage. Wendy? Married. Well done. I should congratulate her. And to whom? She got a job. And met a man. He's single and childless. It worked out well for them. What about you? Nothing. I'm alone. I hoped I'd find you and bring you back. Now I realize that's impossible. But we could have done it. We could go to counseling and keep our family together. I thought I could convince you to go to counseling. Maybe I could. It's just not for me. You've done too much damage. I can't trust you. The kids are here. The front door opened and Masha and a young man and Ben appeared in the hallway. Masha, taking off her shoes, shouted, Mommy, shall we feed Pavel? Sabrina called out from the kitchen. Of course we'll feed him. Why did you stay late today? We had a meeting at Ben's group, so we were waiting for him. All right, young people, wash your hands and come to the table. Volodia, aren't you going anywhere today? No, I'm not. I'll put the wine on. When the children came in, Angelina was paralyzed. She sat in the chair and couldn't get up from excitement. Masha saw her and said, Daddy, why don't you tell us that we have guests? Hello, Mom. Hello, daughter. Hello, son. Having said this, Angelina cried. Larry, calming her down, said, Angelina, it's all right. Let's go to the table. They sat down at the beautifully set table. Sabrina gave Larry a bottle of wine and a corkscrew. Then Masha came to her senses and turning to Angelina said, Mom, meet my fiancé Pavel. We study together at the university. Nice to meet you, 
I'm Masha's first mom. So, let's drink to meeting and getting acquainted. Larry, you just want to drink. Let's talk. Sabrina, let's have a drink, a snack, and then we'll talk. I'm starving. And we have a lot to talk about, including the wedding. What about the wedding? Don't talk dirty. Drinks and appetizers. Everyone drank and started eating in silence. Each of them had a massive chicken thigh baked in the oven and a side dish, fried potatoes. Various sauces were on the table. Salads were served, red fish and cheese tartlets, and other appetizers. Finally, everyone had had enough. Sabrina served dessert, clearing away unnecessary plates and cutlery. When lunch was over, Angelina and Masha went to the room that Masha occupied. Ben did not go, but joined his father, with Pavel sitting with them. They discussed the plans for the wedding. After an hour, Angelina and Masha came to the hall. Masha said, Pavel, get ready, let's go home. Sabrina fussed and went into the kitchen. Soon, she came out with chicken thighs packed in a bag. Separately in a tray, she put the fried potatoes. She said, Masha, this is for you and Pavel for dinner and enough for breakfast. And at lunch, I'll wait for you to come home. I'll make cutlets. Oh, mom, they're a lot of work. It's okay. I'm on vacation anyway. Angelina turned to Ben. So, son, tell me, how did you live? Not bad. I had no time. I studied. First school, now university. I actually wanted to go to work, but my father and mother Sabrina did not allow. They said they could still support me and Masha. Why didn't you call me? What do you think? No, my father didn't forbid it, but it was hard for me to justify what you did. He told you everything. He had to explain why you weren't living with us. That's why he told us everything. I know if he had the option not to, he wouldn't have told us anything. It was hard for him, especially at first. Me and Masha helped him, cooking and cleaning. But all he wanted us to do was study. And we did. Didn't they ask you about your mother at school? They did. We said she didn't live with us. And daddy takes care of everything. We only went to school here, me for three years, Masha for two. She went to university a year before me. She'll be a specialist in the light industry. And you. I went to study software engineering on my dad's advice. Now I'm studying math. Is that one plus one? One plus one is arithmetic. And arithmetic is the branch of math that studies numbers, their relations and properties. What are you going to be? I told you, a computer programmer. My dad bought me a fancy computer for that. And I write programs. You'll need it. I'm going back to my room. I've got some urgent internet stuff to do. Sabrina, having finished in the kitchen, called Angelina and Larry to drink tea. Larry dismissed the suggestion and went to his office, but Angelina agreed. They sat down together. Sabrina put crystal rosettes on the table, some with raspberry jam and others with honey. About the honey, she said. Larry brought this from his business trip. He was supervising a construction site in the Far East, so he brought back buckwheat honey from there. And you weren't afraid to let him go so far away. No, not scared. I trust him. And he trusts me. And without that, there's no family. And the children supported us. It's just a shame we don't have kids together, but it's too late to fix. But you're a lot younger than I am. Unfortunately, I didn't get to experience motherhood. I told Larry that right away. And what did he say? He said I already have kids, and they live with me. I was very nervous when I met them, and they accepted me right away. How long have you two been together? A long time, almost three years. We got married a year ago. No, we didn't have a special wedding. Everything was, let's say, in the working order. But we went on a wedding trip. Where to, if it's no secret? Spain, Tenerife. The kids came with us. We spent two weeks there, then went to Monaco, from there to Milan, Venice. Now, as a present for our daughter, 
We are thinking of sending her and her husband on a wedding trip to Rome. But that's only after we finish our studies. Larry doesn't want them to drop out of school. What are you getting them for their wedding? We've known they were dating for a long time. We have the money. And Larry bought a house on the outskirts, in an up-and-coming neighborhood. He tore it down, and now a beautiful cottage is being completed. Larry designed it. Today a crew is working there, cleaning up the construction debris in the cottage and in the yard. Tomorrow afternoon, we'll go with Larry and Ben to clean it up. Clean it all up. And we're supposed to get the furniture in. Only the kitchen and bedroom are furnished. The rest of the furniture will be bought by the young people themselves. What should I get them? I've got money too, and a decent amount. That's fine. They'll buy a car. To go to the university. Although, there's a shuttle bus every half an hour. Can I clean with you? Why not? Of course you can. I'll give you some work clothes. Sabrina, where do you work? I work in the administration, issuing building permits. That's where I met Larry. Larry came into the kitchen, inquired. How's it going in here? Fine. Angelina wants to know what to get the young people. Angelina, nothing. We're giving them a house that's in Masha's name. And it's not from me and Sabrina, it's from all of us. I brought the money, and I'd like to participate. On your advice, I've been saving separately for Masha and separately for Ben. That's fine. Larry, Angelina wants to come with us tomorrow. I thought she was going to the young people's house. But I don't mind, it'll be quicker. The wedding was over, and Angelina went home. She had shed many tears during that time. Her children had grown older and were more attached to Sabrina, to whom they confided all their secrets. It was from Sabrina that Angelina learned that her son Ben had invited his girl to her daughter's wedding, and that perhaps he would propose to her there. After Angelina left home, sometimes the kids would contact her by phone just to say hello and let her know they were alive and wanted to know she was doing well. But they didn't seek out face-to-face -face meetings. Larry was doing well in life. But the children had never said anything about him, just generalities. Angelina followed the news of the neighboring area as soon as she could and knew that the organization in which he worked was thriving. Nothing much was written about Larry's personal life. Then they met at Ben's son's wedding. Larry looked great as Sabrina was taking care of him. And once again, Angelina bitterly regretted that she had acted so meanly, betraying him.